A very good morning and welcome to St Mary's Church for this service of parish communion. Welcome to everybody here in church and welcome to everybody at home. It's uh, lovely to have you here with us and a special welcome to any visitors here or anyone here for the first time. Do please stay on afterwards for refreshments together at the back of the church. Now, I hope you can all see the screen from where you are. If you can't, or if you prefer to have a service sheet and a hymn book, then they are available. Just put your hand up and uh, one of our welcomers will bring you uh, a copy. Well, before we begin our service, let's just take a few moments to uh, quieten our hearts and our minds and remember we are in God's presence wherever, wherever we are and just bring to him our particular concerns and thanksgivings. As usual, we begin our service with a short act of remembrance, for we are privileged to house the Green Howards Regimental Chapel here in this church, and we always begin our our service with a brief act of remembrance of their sacrifice. So let's stand for that that Green Howards prayer. Almighty and most merciful Father, we give thanks for the service of the Green Howards Regiment, which bore the symbol of your cross and whose sacrifice is commemorated in our regimental chapel. Today, may your inspiration and protection be with the Royal Yorkshire Regiment, that it may protect the weak and vulnerable and serve the cause of liberty and truth. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace and Saviour of all. Amen. We sing our first hymn. It's number 165 in the hymn books. It's Christ is the King.
Lord be with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. In baptism, we died with Christ so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thoughts and words and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to a new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. As we stand, let us pray to the God of mercy. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It is. Please be seated for our reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, 
whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him his perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Our second hymn is number 432 in the hymn books, The Servant King.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus himself stood among the eleven and their companions and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he'd said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then they said to him, Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you whilst I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, perhaps like me, you find the gospel accounts we've just heard to be amongst the most uplifting in the entire Bible. As with any good book, film, or piece of music, we see something new each time we take a fresh look. The same applies, does it not, to annual sporting spectacles like the Grand National, or closer to home, the Beedale Point to Point. Each year, in Eastertide, that particular Bible passage, which follows Luke's story of the road to Emmaus, forms our Gospel reading. So each year, we take a fresh look. So, I wonder what you saw new in our fresh look of this account of the resurrection. If the Bible is God's word, then engaging with Scripture should always bring us a new experience of the living God. To engage with Scripture is to bring our own experience to bear on the text. We don't read or hear it passively. We ask, how is God speaking to us through the text in the light of our own particular circumstances here and now? In fact, today's passage is similar to John's account, which we heard last week. There, the risen Jesus gently, carefully, personally reached out to reassure doubting Thomas that he had risen. Today, we see that he reassures the disciples as a group that he is not some kind of ghost. Touch me and see, he says. And then, He asks them for something to eat. And to calm their fears further, he opens the scriptures to them, the the Hebrew scriptures, our Old Testament, showing them that his death and resurrection are indeed the fulfillment of what had been long promised. For me, today, what is striking in both this account from Luke and last Sunday's account from John is the contrast between the disciples' fear and Jesus' wish to bring them peace. In appearing to them, Jesus says, Peace be with you. Indeed, in John's account, he says this twice. And then John tells us that uh, that, uh, Jesus empowers his disciples with the Holy Spirit, as he had promised he would. Straight afterwards, he says, If you forgive the sins 
of any, they are forgiven. And filled with God's peace and God's power, they are sent out into a world of fear to bring peace to the people they meet. We will have noticed in today's accounts that Luke expresses this through Jesus saying that forgiveness is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, all people. So we, in encountering the risen Christ personally or together as a group, first receive his peace and then are sent out into the world. And whether he's seeking us or sending us, he reaches out to calm our fears. But let's face it, fear is very much part of the human condition. We all know in our own individual ways what debilitating fear looks like and feels like. And over the years, the notorious jump at Aintree, Beecher's Brook, has served as a symbol of facing such fear head on. Rather more helpfully, the rule of St. Benedict offers some valuable insights into how to overcome fear. Benedict speaks of a ladder which features 12 steps to true humility. The first step of humility, Benedict says, quoting Psalm 36, is for us to keep the fear of God always before our eyes. And in this case, Fear is a positive thing. Fear of God is a healthy regard, an offering of due respect. So we might ask ourselves, what is the spring of my thoughts and actions? If it's a sense of God's presence, of his peace and his power, then there can be no room for negative fear. But if our primary motivation is a fear of failure, then our lives will be a constant struggle to live up to a false self-image. And we know from the field of psychology that the struggles we hide are those that ultimately consume us. Now, in her commentary on the rule of St. Benedict, the writer Esther Duval says this, I must accept my own fragility and smallness and deal gently with myself and with others who, of course, are just like me. I must realise that behind the facades we all present to the world, there is fear and insecurity. And if I can accept myself as ordinary, weak, frail, in other words, totally human, and totally dependent upon God, then I'm stripped of my sense of being in some way different, and my genuine, real self can begin to emerge. It is this acceptance of our dependence on God that opens the way for us to grow. As we slowly ascend that ladder of humility, so we allow God to make us whole and in the process to grow in holiness. And one sign of holiness is inner peace. Benedict speaks at length in his rule about the qualities required of a monastery's cellar. The cellar, he says, is a key member of the community because everyone else depends on him or her for their material needs. And as Esther Duval observes, Benedict knows that for the seller, busy and under pressure like many of us today, subject to interruptions, demands and expectations, it is vital that he pays attention to his own equanimity. The seller can handle material objects, other people and himself with the care and reverence required only if he has inner peace. So in fulfilling this vital role, the seller must not be too proud to admit that he, he may need help. He must be prepared to delegate 
and not see himself as indispensable. Well, there is a cellar in each of us, is there not? We rush around pretending we're self-reliant, but unable to handle the things and the people God has given us with the reverence required because we lack inner peace. The risen Christ offers us peace. He comes to us where we are, as we are. He invites us to put aside our fears and let go of our facades. He wills us to depend on him, to allow ourselves to be made whole by him, to grow towards holiness. He reassures us that he will empower us for the work he has given us to do. He wants to set us free, and through us, to set the world free. In proclaiming his peace and his forgiveness to the world, we need first to receive them, which includes being prepared to forgive ourselves. Now, St. Francis, who was a friar rather than a cellar, he wrote a morning prayer, which I used to close the sermon a few weeks ago. And I'd like to do so again today because that prayer sums up so well what I've tried to say. So let us pray. Lord, help me to live this day quietly, easily, to lean on your great strength trustfully, restfully, to wait for the unfolding of your will patiently, serenely, to meet others peacefully, joyfully, to face tomorrow confidently, courageously. Amen. So trusting in the God of love and of mercy and of power, we stand to declare our faith in him. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the spirits and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Living God, long ago faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection and the world was changed forever. Help us to keep faith with them that our witness may be as bold, our love as deep, 
our joy and amazement as real as was theirs when he appeared to them. Gracious God, help us all to play an active part in the vision of this church, ever focusing on Christ's call to all of us to be witnesses and to make disciples of all mankind, to be a people and a place where love works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you gave us a beautiful world in which to live and for which to care. We know that in many areas our stewardship has been a failure. Yet through the victory of Jesus Christ, we know also that you can restore all things in glory. And so we pray for a change of heart and attitude an awakening to a better way of living, the courage to reject wrong principles. We hold before you this morning, Lord, the situation in Israel, the drones from Iran. We think of the RAF crews deployed from Leeming from Coningsby overnight. We think of Nazanin Zaghari Radcliffe, released two years ago, Lord, from Iran, an Iranian, suffering from PTSD. And here in our community, we give thanks, Lord, for the concert here last night, which focused on the swale. We give thanks for the work of Just the Job, for Sam, for his team, and for our charity of the month. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Father God, we pray for our community here, that each of us might make use of our individual talents, enabling each part and group in this church to flourish as a witness to the body of Christ. Help us to spread the warmth of your love to everyone we meet, holding before you today our new pastoral assistants to be commissioned for Jan, for Sharon, for Neil. And we pray for Lewis and Cordelia to be married next Saturday at Downhome. We send them, Lord, through you, our love, our prayers for the road ahead for them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who do not share our Easter joy, especially those living in the shadow of darkness and despair, and for those whose illness narrows their view of the world. We especially pray for all those who have requested prayer, and in the quietness of our own hearts, and in the words of these intercessions, we raise before you those whom we know who are in need. Anne and Mark, having to live apart with separate care. Cecilia, an operation and radiotherapy still to come. Claire, round seven of chemotherapy. David, Jane, Sarah, Amber, Christine, Edna, Frank, Hilary, Elizabeth, Cliff, Tate and Ashton, Eddie, John, Margaret, Howard, Olive, George, Neil, Lucas, Philip, and Susan recovering from successful knee surgery. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
Merciful God, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who have died, those whose anniversaries we recall. Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. We give thanks, Lord, for the lives of Martin Dando, Ken Waite, Sonia Ryder, and the venerable Christopher Hewitson, priest. And for Valerie Moore, whose anniversary falls on Wednesday. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, in the week that lies before us, may we reflect your love in our families, our church and our community, so that the world can see that we are followers of Christ and children of the Most High God and draw others into his loving care. Merciful Father, Accept these, these prayers, prayers for the for sake, the sake of, your, of son, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. After we've shared the peace, the offered hymn will be um, number 468 in the hymn books, Lord of the Dance. But may I now invite you please to stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He's placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us, that we may live in you.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. A word to anyone visiting us here today. All are welcome to come up to the altar rail to receive the sacrament, or if you'd rather, to receive a blessing. All are welcome either to kneel at the altar rail, or if you prefer, to stand. And um, may I after our ministers and the choir have received, um, then may I suggest you follow the instructions of our stewards in terms of um, when to come forward. Thank you.
Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we say together, Faithful God, in baptism you have adopted us as your children, made us members of the body of Christ, and chosen us as inheritors of your kingdom. We thank you that in this Eucharist you renew your promises within us, empower us by your Spirit to witness and to serve, and send us out as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before our final hymn, the notices, of which there's a few. So you've got the pew sheets. Please take those home with you as a reminder of what's happening. Um, and in addition to that, uh, SFX School, they're running some um, prayer and coffee mornings in the chapel in the school. Uh, first one is, is this coming um, Thursday. Thursday? Uh, the 18th, when's the 18th? Yeah, Thursday. And um, that's uh, 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock. And they'll be doing that weekly from, from this week. So all are welcome between 10 and 11 uh, at SFX School. They're raising funds um, both for Christian aid and also for their, uh, their Lord's pilgrimage. Um, so that's in a very good cause. And it's always good to go into SFX they will be coming to us actually on the 7th of May, 5th of May um, for our next morning worship service. Today uh, we have Call Even Song at 6.30 and coming up we've got next Sunday in the afternoon um, we've got an all age games afternoon. Uh, that's indoor games but these are card games I believe rather than ball games. So all are welcome uh, at 4 o'clock here in church. Um, actually next Sunday morning we've got the, the Dean of Ripon Cathedral coming to preach for us so it's a, an action packed uh, Sunday next week isn't it uh, so we look forward to welcoming Dean John um, now it says in the pew sheets that the ladies night uh, is in March well we've kind of had that so I'm banking on the ladies, next slide, ladies night being the 26th of April. Um, so I hope that's right, Helen. 26th of April, that's a relief, okay. And the annual meeting is the 28th of April, not the 29th, as it says in the pew sheets. I know you've worked that out. It's straight after this service in two weeks' time. Uh, what else? We've got, um, yeah, the 200 Club. So uh, we took the 200 Club draw this morning, and the winning number is 154, Jill Grange. So, Jill, I know you're tuning in, so congratulations to you. And the voluntary at the end of this service, played by Colin, will be a Bach piece, the prelude in G major, written in 1705 and still going strong. Now there's two more very wonderful things to do, or three more actually. Um, first of all, before I forget, I'm going to call some Bands of Marriage. I publish the Bands of Marriage between Stephen Grundy and Michaela Richardson, both very much of this parish. This is the first time of asking and if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it. So let's pray for Michaela and Stephen as they prepare for their wedding next month. Lord, the source of all true love, we pray for this couple. Grant to them joy of heart and reverence of spirit as they enter into the oneness of marriage, that they may be strengthened and guided by you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, Michaela, nobody's piped up, nobody's objected so, so far, so good. 
<laughs> um, what I'd like to do now is to invite any young people who've been studying stuff at the back to come up and tell us what they've learnt. Wilfred? Yeah, that's good. Wilfred's up for this. So, okay, Wilfred, so what book in the Bible have, have you been looking at? I've been looking at learning to live after our mistakes. Oh, that was going to be my next question. So you've been reading about all that in the Acts of the Apostles, haven't you? But yeah, yeah um, we all make mistakes. Even you, even me, we all make mistakes. And we have to learn to live with them and be gentle on ourselves, don't we? Are you gentle on yourself? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And so what do you think is the main point that you'd like to um, tell um, everybody about what you've learned today about making mistakes? That... After Jesus had risen, um, he gave the disciples the Holy Spirit that helped them do different languages, and he gave Peter the power to heal people. Yes, he did. And he said, didn't he, if you forgive the sins of anyone, any mistakes of anybody, they are forgiven. So... If, if that's true for other people, then it's true for us as well. If we're told that we're forgiven, we are forgiven. Even if we forgive ourselves. That's the hardest thing to do sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. Well done, Wilfred. You're a genius, as ever. You're going to show, show the colouring in that you've done? <laughs> you should be proud of that. Look at that. Let's give Wilfred a round of applause. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Off you go. And last but not least, I would like to invite our newly trained pastoral assistants, um, Jan, who's going to leave the tech desk um, to come up to the front, and Sharon and Graham as well. If you come up to the front, please, because we're going to commission you. And if our current pastoral assistants, Jennifer and Sharon Deegan, will be willing to come up as well, if you would, it would be lovely to see you. So I'll tell you what, if you, the three of you stand on this side, and then we'll have Jennifer and Sharon on this side. Actually, um, the, the sessions of training that Sharon and Graham and Jan have done, um, the, the last one had to be postponed, didn't it, because of uh, ill health of the, uh, the tutor. So the last one is actually coming up <laughs> this week, but we'll ignore that because they know what they're doing already. And we're going to commission them. So they will be joining the pastoral care team who include already Jennifer and Sharon. So two Sharons in one team. And it's great to have you already in the team, both of you. And it will be wonderful to have you joining the team. And as three join, one will be leaving us um, in the next few months, won't you, Jennifer, as you're moving house. But we're going to make the most of you whilst we've still got you. So, um, this is a special order for the commissioning of lay pastoral ministers. Your ministers, not mere assistants, ministers. So, this is an introduction. Lay pastoral ministers work alongside and under the authority of the incumbents to whom they're authorized, giving practical support in areas of pastoral care identified in consultation with the incumbent and parochial church council. They may also work in particular institutions under the authority of its chaplain. In so doing, they share the ministry of love and service entrusted to the church by Christ himself. So your answer to this question is, with the help of God, we do. With the help of God, we do. So, Sharon, Graham, Jan, do you recommit yourselves to care for God's people 
through the work of pastoral ministry. With the help of God, we do. Oh, yes, that's good. I can ask the, these, these two if, they do the, if they'll do the same, just to remind you of, of what it is that you're about. So, Jennifer and Sharon, do you recommit yourselves to care for God's people through the work of pastoral ministry? With the help of God, we do. Great. Now, this is where everybody else comes in. And there are two questions I'm going to ask. The answer to the first one is, it is. And the answer to the second one is, we will. It is, then we will. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is it your will that they fulfill this ministry? Will you uphold them in this service? There you are. You're supported. So let's pray. God of compassion and love, bless, we pray, these pastoral ministers whom we commission in your name to feed the hungry, give drink to those who thirst, and visit the sick. Grant them the wisdom, gentleness, and courage of your Holy Spirit, that's following the example of Christ's service and equipped with his gifts, they may be ministers of your love and signs of your kingdom on earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Thanks, Jan. And thanks, Jennifer. Okay, we're going to sing our final hymn now. And uh, just to give Jan a, a chance to get back to the, the tech desk, I'll let you know what it is. It's Rejoice, the Lord is King. It's number 563 in the hymn books. We stand to sing.
remain standing as we receive God's blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.